the cystoscopy. Testing the instrument. When all is ready, the operator glances through the telescope to be sure the lenses are not fogged, then attaches the sheath of the cystoscope to the source of electricity to test the lamp. The rheostat is set at the correct point, the wires again disconnected. Introduction of the instrument. The cystoscopic sheath with its obturator in place is lubricated and introduced. The female urethra presents no obstruction other than a little tightness sometimes encountered. The cystoscope is introduced into the male urethra like a sound. Its entry into the posterior urethra is facilitated by firm downward pressure over the pubes to relax the suspensory ligament. It may slip quite readily over the bladder neck or it may have to be still further depressed, aided by the pubic counter pressure until the long axis of the shaft swings beyond that of the patient's body. The tip may even have to be lifted by a finger introduced into the rectum. But one must always remember that, as in the case of the sound, entrance into the bladder is affected by swinging the shaft into correct position, not by pushing. Any doubt as to whether the instrument has actually entered the bladder is settled by removing the obturator and injecting a little water. This returns freely if the cystoscope is properly placed with its aperture turned toward the vault of the bladder. Irrigation. Enough water is then injected to clear the bladder of blood, pus, and lubricant. This is most quickly accomplished by injecting about 50 cc's at a time. When using a modern irrigating instrument, one need not irrigate the bladder beforehand or take any special precaution to have the fluid absolutely clean before introducing the telescope. For repeated in and out irrigation during the operation is the best method of cleaning the field of much pus or blood. Examination. The telescope is then introduced, a stopcock opened to admit the irrigating fluid, and the examination begun as the bladder is filling with water. The patient's complaint, if the bladder is much inflamed, or the obliteration of folds, if it is not, is the signal for shutting off the inflow of water. The order in which the various parts of the bladder are examined will depend upon the habit of the operator and will vary somewhat with the emergency of the case, but it is well to follow a definite system lest one overlook some unsuspected lesion. The common practice of plunging the cystoscope into the bladder and two catheters into the ureters and then retreating without so much as a glance about the rest of the organ cannot be too strongly condemned. We employ the following order in examining the bladder. The bladder neck, the trigone, the ureter orifices, the fundus, especially that part adjacent to the ureters, and finally the vault. With certain cystoscopes, one may also examine the posterior urethra as one withdraws the instrument from the bladder. Ureter catheterism. If indicated, the ureters are then catheterized, page 67, or intravesical operations, any operative work performed. Close of the cystoscopy. At the close of the cystoscopy, the bladder is emptied through the sheath after withdrawal of the telescope. Then there should be injected about 50 cc's of one to 5,000 silver nitrate solution to be urinated out by the patient, if he can empty his bladder, or withdrawn through the cystoscopic sheath, if he cannot. Treatment after cystoscopy. To most patients, a cystoscopy means no more than a considerable discomfort for a few minutes, followed by a soreness at the neck of the bladder lasting a day or so. But the operation may be followed by a chill, cystitis, pyelonephritis, or renal colic. The infectious complications only occur in cases already infected and draining badly. Hence, they may be foreseen and properly guarded against by antisepsis, gentleness, and keeping the patient quiet. Renal colic following ureter catheterism may not be foreseen. Its usual cause is probably ureteral occlusion by blood clot. Yet it seems much rarer in those who are able to rest after the operation than in those who have to go about. Consequently, it is wise to set the cystoscopy for a time when the patient shall have nothing to do for the rest of the day. Inflammatory complications following the operation are to be treated in accordance with the usual rules.